Welcome to the first of several videos on the integration technique of trig substitution. All of the techniques discussed in this video are based upon these Pythagorean identities in this form. We have what? We have 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta, which also can be expressed as secant squared theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared theta. We'll be looking at three different types of integrals that require trig substitution. The first type will be the integral involving the square root of a squared minus x squared. And if we have an integral in this form, we're gonna let x equal a sine theta. And if we do that, then the square root of a squared minus x squared will equal a cosine theta. And this is based on the identity one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. For example, if we had a problem where a was equal to three, we'd have the square root of nine minus, if a was three, x would be three sine theta, so we'd have nine sine squared theta. Let's go and take a look at how this simplifies. We know there's a common factor of nine, so we could factor out the nine and have one minus sine squared theta, and then one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta, And of course, the square root of nine would be three, and the square root of cosine squared would be cosine theta. So this just shows that when we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, where x is a sine theta, it would equal a cosine theta, and this is the reason why. The second type of integral we'll take a look at will be in the form of the square root of a squared plus x squared. And if this is the case, we'll let x equal a tangent theta. So if we use the identity one plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta, the square root of a squared plus x squared, in this case, will be equal to a secant theta. And then the last case will be when we have an integral involving the square root of x squared minus a squared. And in this case, we'll let x equal a secant theta. Therefore, the square root of x squared minus a squared will equal plus or minus a tangent theta. Notice this one has a plus or minus, and that's based upon the angle theta. Since tangent theta is positive between zero and pi over two, we'd use positive a, and between pi over two and pi, tangent theta is negative, so we'd use negative a. And again, this equation here is based upon the fact that secant squared theta minus one is equal to tangent squared theta. One last word of caution before we take a look at our first example. We don't want to assume that every integral in the forms discussed will require trig substitution. For example, if we compare these two integrals, only one of them would require trig substitution. The other one only requires basic u substitution. Can you recognize the one that requires basic u substitution? It's actually the second one here, because if we let u equal the radicand, nine minus x squared, then differential u is gonna equal a negative two x dx. And notice this integrand does have x dx. So if we divided both sides by negative two, we'd have negative one half du is equal to x dx. So we could rewrite this in terms of u. What we would have is, again, x dx would equal negative one half du and this would be one over the square root of u, or u to the negative one half. So we could find the antiderivative using basic u substitution. However, on this integral, we would have to use trig substitution. Let's go and take a look at our first example. Notice the integral involves the square root of nine minus x squared. So this involves the form the square root of a squared minus x squared. So a squared is going to equal nine, therefore a would be equal to three, so we're gonna let x equal three sine theta. Now let's go ahead and find differential x. Differential x is gonna equal three cosine theta, d theta. And the last thing we need to do before we perform this substitution is sketch a triangle that represents angle theta. We're gonna need that toward the end of the problem. So let's sketch a right triangle, identify angle theta, and looking at this equation here, if we solve this for sine theta, sine theta will equal x over three, which means the opposite side would be x and the hypotenuse would be three. 
So using the Pythagorean theorem, we could state that this side here would be the square root of three squared minus x squared, or nine minus x squared. Now let's go back to the integral and perform the substitution. Notice that dx is equal to three cosine theta d theta. So we'll have three cosine theta d theta over the square root of nine minus x squared. Well, that'll be nine minus nine sine squared theta. Now performing this substitution, this denominator is going to simplify nicely. Remember the square root of nine minus nine sine squared theta simplifies nicely to three cosine theta. So this is equal to three cosine theta over three cosine theta d theta. Well of course this simplifies to one. And the antiderivative of one with respect to theta would be theta plus c. So we do have the antiderivative here, but it's not in terms of x like the original integral. So we can't leave our answer in terms of theta. And that's why it's so important that we have this right triangle here. We know that sine theta is equal to x over three. So if we take the inverse sine of both sides, we can solve this equation for theta in terms of x to express our antiderivative in terms of x. Remember the inverse sine of sine theta equals the inverse sine of x over three. On the left we have inverse sine of x over three. Therefore the antiderivative in terms of x will be inverse sine x over three plus c. So it is very important that we remember when we're setting up this integral from the beginning that we do sketch a right triangle that models our angle theta. Okay, this is gonna be the end of part one. In the next video, we'll take a look at the form of the square root of a squared plus x squared when we let x equal a tangent theta. I hope you watch part two.